Hey, hey, friends, welcome to the Coffee Run Live. We are Wednesday, the, I don't know, something, the 28th of April. It's crazy how much, how fast this month has gone. Don't you think? I think it has gone super, super quick. Just wanted to come in really quickly. I've got some planning that I'm doing this morning, and I thought that it would be helpful to come in and just remind you of the importance of knowing your numbers. Now, when we're talking about knowing your numbers, there's a, there's a few different types of, I guess, categories that you can think about. The first one is your business break-even number. Do you know how much it costs you every single month to run your business? Now, hey, Rebecca, how are you? Thank you so much. Uh, do you know how much it costs you to run your business? And most people, when I talk to them, they'll say, no, I actually have no idea. And this can be people who have been, um, you know, in, in business for a long time. It can be people who have been in business for not very long at all. Hey, Geordie. Oh, thank you so much. You're so cute. I've seen you around though. Um, one of the things I guess that with, when we're thinking about the break-even numbers, most people forget that it's not just your like your your marketing. It's not just your um, your expenses in terms of you know your your lead generation things and stuff like that. It's actually everything that it takes for you to be able to run your business. So, for instance. When was the last time you sat down and actually went through all of your bank statements for your work for business and actually worked out, all right, these are all of the things that you have to pay for. Now, what blew me away uh, going back quite some time ago was, and, and, and the reason we need to know this is around your profitability. So one of the things that blew me away uh, some time ago was how much it actually cost, how much I need to make before I even pay myself a wage, before I even pay myself a salary, before I even look at paying tax or anything like that. What we've got is you've got your subscriptions. So your financial subscriptions, you might use Zero or Myob or something like that. Uh, you might use a bookkeeper, so you need to put that in there. I hope you all have insurance. You should all have insurance. You should have, at least particularly if you're coaches, you should have professional indemnity insurance. You should have, um, if, you're, if you're traveling and things like that, you might have uh, public liability insurance. They're the two bare bones minimum things that you should absolutely have. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, not a financial planner, but absolutely you should have these things. And I'm not a broker, I don't get a referral fee or anything like that. But you've got to have some type of cover. Then you might also be looking at things like, hey, Lisa, hey, Chrissy, how are you? You might be looking at things like your, well, you should be looking at things like how much is it costing you to have Canva each month? Do you pay a Canva fee? Do you, do, do you use the pro version? Um, I use SoundCloud and for my audio uh, storage uh, place audio storage place. I use SoundCloud so that they can then go to Spotify and iTunes and all around the place. So all of the audio versions of the Coffee Run, they go in there and then it gets syndicated out. Now I invest in the pro version of that because it's give, it gives me unlimited minutes every month. I have a lot of words, you guys. It gives me unlimited minutes every month for me to be able to go and put up in there. With Vimeo, I use Vimeo as well. So I pay a monthly fee or an annual fee for that. And what I look at with that is the reason that I like Vimeo. Absolutely, Chrissy, 100%. If you're, if you're providing advice, you need public liability and you need professional indemnity insurance. Is my personal opinion, not a financial planner. Uh, just, just so that we're really clear. Uh, obviously, you, you'll go disclaimer, 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 go seek your, your normal advice that you, that you might access. So with your, um, like with Vimeo, the reason that I use Vimeo is because when I go and put videos up in my membership site, or I might go and put videos up on my blog, you guys know that I, I, I'll do every now and again, I'll do video blogs and things like that. I use Vimeo because it gives me a, a, a nice, clean video player, right? And it doesn't automatically take you on to somebody else's video when 
my video has finished. Whereas YouTube, it can it can often go, okay, so you enjoyed this video, that's great. Then you say you might also like blah blah, and I'm like, no, I want you to stay in my site. Like I I don't want you to um you know be going out anywhere else. I want you to stay on my stuff and listen to my stuff. So with Vimeo, you can customize the player. And you can use, yep, that's fine, Lisa, whatever you want to use. Uh, I That's just what I use, okay? So on my own website, for my membership site is different. On my own blog website, it is completely standalone. I do not have it linked to Kartra, which is my uh, lead generation system, which we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I want it to be completely standalone. So that's what... Um, that's what I use for that. Now, I do pay for the, the pro Vimeo fee, which I think is $190, maybe $190 a year or something like that. Hey, Colleen, how are you? So you've got like, these are the little things that add up, right? So you've got your $190 a year. You've got your monthly fees for your accounting software. You've got then what you look at, and we, we've touched on this, your lead generation software. Now, this is often called a CRM, a client record management system. It might be called your lead generation system. You will all have heard, I'm sure, of things like MailChimp, um, lead pages, Infusionsoft, Kartra, Kajabi, Constant Contact, One Contact. Uh, is that there's a billion and one different systems that you can use for your, basically for your data storage. Now, what I do with this, what I like about this is, well, and, and the, actually one of the big reasons why this is really important is that when you go and put your lead magnets out there, so your guides, your PDFs, your whatever, you can give people that automatically and then they can, uh, so you can have an autoresponder go. So if Lisa was to say, yes, please, I would like your blogging toolkit, She'd go to the thing, put her name and email address in, and automatically my system will send out to you, provided you give us the correct email address, will email you directly that tool or that, that resource that you've requested. So I pay a monthly fee for me to be able to do that automatically. Now, what, what that means is that there's a whole group of thousands of people that are living in an online database that I can mail out, and I do every day or twice a day. So I'll send out my copyright emails, uh, like saying, hey, catch up on this. These were the Cliffs notes of it. This is what you can, this is what we're listening to. Uh, and then we'll also send out a blog later on in the day normally, or we'll talk about contentology or the, the visible live national tour that I haven't started promoting yet, but it's so exciting decided to do in June, you know, we'll let you know, hey, if you if you want to buy something, then this is how this is what you could buy and this is how it can help you. So we've got a CRM. Now depending on how many people you have in that will generally depend on how much you pay depending on your uh, service provider. Generally speaking, what happens is it's a sliding scale. So when you've got say a thousand people in there, you know, something like Active Campaign might only cost you like $19 a month. And then when you hit 2,500 people on your email list, then that monthly fee will go up to maybe $49 a month. I, I don't know this, like I'm, I'm not an affiliate. I don't know what the pricing is, purely giving this as an example. And then when you have 5,000 people in there, your fee goes up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So and generally what happens is the higher the higher number of subscribers you have, the more functionality you will want your CRM to be doing. So you need to know how much that's costing you each month. If you have subscribed, like me, to uh, Adobe Stock, so I, I go and sometimes I'll use stock photos for different things depending on what projects we're working on. Uh, I pay a monthly fee to have, I don't know, however many stock photos that I can download. Um, the other thing that you want to have a look at is, so you've got your stock photos, you've got your lead generation systems. Oh, how much does it cost you for Facebook ads? Are you doing Facebook ads? How much are you spending on your advertising each month? You need to know that fee. Now, one of the things that I will have a look at, I pay my accountants a, basically it's an annual fee 
for them, usually around the same amount of money, for them to do my tax every year and to work out what needs to happen. So what I do when I'm working out my monthly break even numbers, I'll look at whatever that fee is annually and then divide that by 12. I really like to do this stuff monthly, like in my head. It's like, all right, well, I know that it's gonna cost me just before I do anything, I have to make $5,000 just to keep the lights on, for example, or $10,000 or $40,000 or however much money it costs for you to just keep the lights on. Now, interestingly, when I was doing a million a year, so this is going back a few years ago, when I was sitting on a million a year, my break even, turn on the lights to pay my team, to pay not my tax and not to pay me, but just to pay my team, to pay my subscriptions, to pay my mentoring fees, that needs to come in for all of your, um, all of your working outs as, as well. Are you paying for mentoring? Awesome, put it in your monthly break even number. My break even number was something like $47,000 a month. So I had to bring in at least 47 grand before I could even think about paying me, right? So that was a lot of pressure. So what I actually had to look at, I, I went through and I'm like, all right, let's do my numbers. I wonder what would happen in terms of profitability, in terms of the money left, you can't see me, I'm hitting my pocket. In terms of the money left in my pocket at the end of every month, I'm actually better off financially having a lower turnover business and retaining more of the money, right? I actually ended up making more money, having more money in my pocket than what I did when we were doing a million a year, which is, you know, seems kind of crazy. So this is why these numbers are really important. So when you're going in and you're having a look at all of this and you can decide, all right, this is, this is all really great. This is all really excellent. If I am then making X number of dollars. So you can go, all right, so in order to make that, then I need to sell this many widgets. I need to sell this many programs. You need to do X, Y, Z. You can also then work out what are your, like, what are your superfluous expenses or are the things in there that you don't need to be spending money on, right? And I think this is a really important consideration because if, you know, we all spend money on shit we don't need, to be blunt, right? I can go and cancel my $39 a month uh, Adobe photo stock. $39 a month isn't these days isn't going to make or break me, but it's money that I'm paying to them. I've, I've got like something like 100 credits up my sleeve. It's ridiculous. I need to go cancel that account. Um, like why am I giving them 40 bucks a month for shit that I'm not even using? It's insane. So it's important for you to do this really regularly. So you've got your business break even numbers. <clears throat> Something that I did uh, going back when money was really, really tight, I went and worked out what my household monthly break even was as well. That made me want to vomit a little bit. <clears throat> you know, talking about superfluous spending, when things were really tight, and <clears throat> one of the things that I was really looking at doing was screwing down our household bills screwing down the money that I was spending or anyone was spending on things that we didn't need in that moment, getting that down. And then what I would do is like, I was like, all right, so how much money was my husband bringing in, which showed me the gap, right? So I've got how much money is Don bringing in? How much money do we need to be able to keep the household running? That's the minimum amount of money that I need to contribute to the household, right? So my business has to make that amount of money. Now, if I know that that's my household break-even number I, and there's a shortfall there, let's say it was, I don't know, $4,000 a month or $5,000 a month that I have to bring in to contribute to the household. I need to then, <clears throat> excuse me, add that over onto my business break even numbers, right? Because that's almost like a business expense. I have to add that on there. And then when I started doing that, I was like, oh my gosh, you know, this is, this is really enlightening. Before anything, just in order, like without any extra money, without doing anything, I knew what my household <clears throat> break even money was. And then I knew what my uh, business break even money was so that everything could work. When was the last time that you did that? Because I know 
<clears throat> one of the big things that happen is we can become a little bit complacent. And, you know, there's that, that old saying, you know, we live to our means and we don't want to live beyond our means. And if you're, if you're really looking at, this is smart, not just for when things are tight, but for smart money, right? So smart money habits are the things that are going to make you more profitable, that are going to have you being able to redirect funds that are maybe going to like shift them in another direction. So for example, that 40 bucks a month that I pay to Adobe, which doesn't seem like a lot of money, I know I can go, or to me at this stage, back in the day, it was huge. I could go and put that money over into lead generation. Now for me, I know that if my leads are costing $4 a lead, that's 10 new people that I could have on my email list every month without actually spending any more money. And the other thing with that is that if I'm spending that money on lead generation and they're going into my email list, like I was talking to you about before, I'm able to educate, engage, inspire, motivate, stay in contact with them. And, and it means that I'm able to have that, like I've got a conversation with 10 more amazing humans than what I would have had if I hadn't refunneled that money somewhere else. So it's not just about, I mean, all right, I'm going to take that $40 and I'm going to put it in my pocket and spend it on coffee every month. Be smart about where you're funneling your money. Geordie says, I haven't done it in ages, and this is why I was meant to be listening today. Oh, very good. It is a great exercise, Lisa. Absolutely. Uh, so they're the two big things that I wanted to hit on today. The third big thing that I wanted you to be really mindful of is knowing how your lead generation is going. Now, the I think one of the things that we that I've seen that people can become a little bit um, complacent around or kind of, it's a bit like they're putting your head in the sand type of stuff. You've got to know how your lead generation, how it's tracking. You've got to make sure that it's converting. You've got to know how much your leads are costing you because then when you know all of that, you can go, all right, I generate this number of leads. I know this percentage of people do something else. So then you can start making informed decisions about scaling up your ad spend, scaling down your ad spend, or changing what it is that you're doing. Again, this is making smart use of your money. If you're spending money on anything to do in your business, anything in your business, if you're spending money on anything in your business, you should be getting a return on investment for it. Now, that could look like your the money that you're putting in is helping you to make more money, or the other really solid return on investment that I look at is how much time is that giving me back? Is it making my life easier? Is it making my business easier? Is it making my communication easier? And if it's yes, 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 then I'm still getting a return on investment because if I can, instead of going to Excel, right, and getting everybody's email addresses and then manually emailing everyone, number one, like that's gonna take me freaking forever with you know thousands of people on an email list. But if that takes me, say, three hours a day or takes you three hours a day to go and manually email everybody, you could be using a, an automation service that might take you half an hour to do all of that stuff by the time you're jumping in, you do the creative and you get everything set up and you blah, blah, blah. You gain two and a half hours a day then of time that you can use to sell that you can use to create content, that you can use to put offers out there, that you can use to be creative, that you can use to go to the day spa, that you can use to go and do whatever the heck it is that you like. So return on investment, I think one of the big things that people get caught up in is, well, is this actually gonna make me money? Sometimes it's not about the making money, sometimes it's about creating the time and the space so that you can do the things that you, that you really wanna be doing. So, that is what I have for you today. So bottom line, know your numbers. The first exercise doesn't matter if they, oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter which order you do them in. But the first exercise that I would do is run, work out and run your numbers. Work out what your break even numbers are for your business. Don't assume that you know. 
because in almost every case that and every client that I've done this with, their break-even number is higher than they anticipated, all right, by the time you add all of the things together. The second thing that you need to do is do your household break-even number. Work out what the shortfall is. If there is a shortfall, then you need to add that over onto your business expenses because your household needs the money to run, right? If there's not a shortfall, booyah, you're in good hands. That's awesome. The third thing that you want to do is just make sure that you know how things are working and making sure that you're getting a return on investment, either a financial return or a time return on what it is that you are doing. So that is that, my friends. I trust that that helps you. If you've got any questions about this, make sure you let me know. Otherwise, get out there, go help some people, have a whole ton of fun doing it, and remember that the world is ready for your brand of awesome. And of course, I will see you, if not before, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.